Hey, good afternoon. We'd like to start. So my name is Iris Finkelstein. I'm with Nokia CloudBand. And I'm here today with my colleague Ohad Shamir, also from Nokia CloudBand, and with Gerald Kunzman from Doctor, who's also a particip participating member of uh, OPNFV. And what we'd like to talk to you today about is our project Vitrage and how we're collaborating with OPNFV um, Doctor project. So, move? Okay. Um, so just so you know how this is going to be set up, um, we're going to be starting out talking a little bit about the CloudBand NFV portfolio, just to give you a little bit of overview and background on what CloudBand is doing and how CloudBand has actually been transforming itself over the last couple of years to do more open source and be a major contributor towards these efforts. Going on uh, to Gerald's part, we'll be talking about OPNFV Doctor, giving an overview and a little bit about the NFV use cases. And then we'll have a deep dive into the Vitrage project itself by Ohad. Um, and then going on into how Vitrage is actually implemented and answering uh, the doctor project requirements. Why is this going backwards all the time? OK. And finishing with the roadmap for uh, Vitrage going forward, where we see it uh, going. So this is going backwards. I'm not touching it. <laughs> Move. OK. I'm not going to touch it anymore. So talking a little bit about um, CloudBand, for those of you uh, who don't know, um, CloudBand started about five years ago. Basically, we're an NFV management and orchestration portfolio of uh, products. Um, as I mentioned, we started five years ago, and that means that at least in the NFV industry, we have a long history, um, very knowledgeable about this, uh, this industry, a lot of connections with customers and with uh, partners, and a lot of work with the standardization um, organizations. If we look a little bit uh, into the Nokia cloud portfolio, then CloudBand is very well situated with products covering everything from OSS management, element, element network management, virtual network functions, both from Nokia and from third parties. So you can see that we have Nokia elements and we have third party elements. And this is a very open platform from the hardware all the way up to the service management, OSS, BSS. In terms of cloud-band portfolio of products specifically, we're talking about the NFVO, the NFV orchestration, which is um, our cloud-band network director product our VNFM, VNF Manager, which is our CloudBand Application Manager, and then the uh, CloudBand Infrastructure um, uh, Software, which is based on OpenStack and in collaboration, of course, with uh, Nuage Networks. So going forward with CloudBand, when we talk about how we're going to achieve NFV next generation uh, goals, we're talking about VNF certification, so this is a really important project uh, uh, going forward in terms of standardizing VNFs and making them cloud ready and virtualization ready. Of course, open architecture, and you can see the beginnings of that here, and we're expanding this open architecture and making sure that it really fits the industry requirements. Um, open source, we're gonna be talking a lot about open source uh, in a second, so I won't go into that too much. Hardware acceleration on the infrastructure, obviously. And I can't see over there, that's very far. So automatic orchestration. Uh, we're doing a lot of work on, on uh, automation and especially on automating our orchestration so that um, when we talk to uh, service providers, they have the most tools that they can get in order to be able to work and operate their networks in the most efficient way possible. One of the things that we've announced recently is the shared data layer where we abstract information from our VNFs and take them to a higher level, again, to increase automation and, get, and make getting the information for service providers more easy. Um, and Nokia and virtual network functions are primarily built for NFV. So this is work that we've been doing together with um, other units within Nokia to ensure that everything is really focused on NFV and on bringing service provider the best operational experience. 
Um, one of the things that we've been focusing a lot over the last couple of years is building the ecosystem, and CloudBand has, um, if I'm not mistaken, the first ecosystem in the NFV uh, industry, counts over 60 companies and partners uh, today, very widespread, working together and building use cases on testing, validating, and certifying VNFs. And what we call uh, LeanOps, and I'll be showing you a demonstration of what, of what exactly we mean by LeanOps in a bit. So I want to take you back just a little bit when we talk about CloudBand and Nokia and how we're transforming ourselves to be very much uh, within this world of uh, open source. So if we go back a couple of years, we were all about IP focus, so a very proprietary uh, development. But this has changed over the years, and we see that we've begun using open source more, contributing to open source, and going upstream. And this is really what we're here today to talk about. So just to, to give you a little bit of information about how we've been seeing things for the last couple of years. So back in the day, um, our brand differentiation was actually created through proprietary code. So we didn't know anything else. We didn't realize that this could be changed, that this did not really matter, especially for the NFV uh, industry. And of course, our patents equaled huge value. And for us, intellectual property was everything. And that's very corporate thinking, of course. And if we look at Bell Labs, Bell Labs is a part of Nokia today. So Bell Labs today has over 15,000 patent applications, eight Nobel Prizes, 30,000 or more, th more than 30,000 actually active uh, patents. So that's very IP focused. And that's still continuing today together with our work on uh, open source. So over the years, we've sort of done this strategic shift from a very IP focused uh, type of uh, development into realizing, especially I think since CloudBand came along, realizing that NFV has the potential to be using open source to the greater advantage both of ourselves as a vendor and of course to the industry and the service providers. So we started using open source and uh, CloudBand has actually been using open source since the very beginning. And when you start using open source in a company such as ours, then you have to overcome all kinds of hurdles. Legal hurdles, um, various types of organizational change as you move forward and, and integrate this work of open source into your company. So organizational mindset and so on, you get the picture. And as I said at CloudBand, since day one, we've actually been using open source. You can see a variety of um, projects that we've been working with and integrating into our code. And if we're talking current status, then we've been contributing heavily to open source over the last, I would say, year and a half. And I know for some of you, this may not seem like big numbers, but for us specifically, if we look at Metaka, and I think these numbers are a little bit outdated, then 60 something plus lines of code is a very big deal uh, for us. So we've been contributing lines of code, contributing blueprints, uh, and really working very heavily on this. So one of the things we realized after we started contributing code that, again, that's not enough. So we keep moving forward with this uh, industry. And we're hearing from our customers that they're demanding open source. They want us to use this. They understand that this is in their best uh, uh, interest to achieve an uh, open innovation uh, forward kind of uh, development. So at this point in time, we decide that we need to go upstream, of course, and contribute to the very uh, highest levels. And one of, the things, um, one of the things that we're doing, especially in this aspect, is our project vitrage, and we're going to go into that in a, uh, a bit, in a couple of minutes, actually. Um, so we sort of tried to think about what of the things that we've learned about working with, uh, um, with open source over the last couple of years. So I think these are the main points, and we're really trying to be very proactive uh, uh, about this, contributing, initiating projects, and really being a part of the community. And um, I think one of the main reasons that we're here today is really about integrating ourselves into the OpenStack community and becoming a part of it and helping others become a part of our projects as well. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions over the last couple of days when we're talking about vitrage at our booth. What is 
or what is the, the meaning of the word vitrage actually, and I understand that I have to explain it. So vitrage is actually a stained glass window, and when you think about a stained glass window, you think about a lot of pieces of colored glass. And when you look at them separately, they don't mean anything, but when you put them all together, you get this beautiful picture. Um, and that's really the essence of vitrage, gathering a lot of bits of information from lots of data sources, putting them together and giving you a window, an actual vision, insight into your system. Move? No? It's not moving? I'm sorry, something jumped up here. I have a new version of Java available apparently. Okay, so I want to really quickly show you, if you remember, a little, uh, a couple of minutes ago, I talked about what we call lean ops. So this is actually visualization um, of a simulation that we created at the Cloud Innovation Center within uh, Nokia. And we call it lean ops because its purpose is really to provide service providers with the understanding of how they can, they can bring lean operations to their NFV uh, uh, systems. And what we're looking here is actually a visualization of a cloud environment, a very sophisticated environment, where we have both the virtual uh, infrastructure and the physical infrastructure at the same place. And we can see all of this together, and that's really important, and you'll see later on for Vitraj, especially why it's so uh, uh, important. So as I said, we have the physical infrastructure at the bottom. There we can see the servers and how they connect to the virtual environments. And if we go up, we can see the virtual infrastructure, and that's actually represented by city blocks, which represent VNFs or applications, and by buildings, which represent um, virtual machines or instances. Each one of these buildings has a different height, you can see, and that actually represents memory, CPU, resources that were used for the, um, for the virtual machine. So I'm showing this to you just to be able to give you a visualization of what it, we're talking about when we say vitrage for root cause uh, um, analysis. So if you can think about the physical infrastructure that we see at the bottom, just imagine for a second that we have a failure in one of the switches in the physical infrastructure, okay? So we have a connectivity problem in the physical switch, and that in turn leads to a connectivity problem in the physical host, and that in turn leads to the virtual machine being disconnected from the network, and that leads to the application or the VNF becoming disconnected from the virtual machine, and so on and so on. Now in this visualization, you can just imagine that you have one switch that fails in one location, but what happens if you have hundreds of switches that are failing all over the place, and each of those in turn causes this chain reaction to the host, to the VM, to the VNF, and so on and so on. And network operators today, they don't have this information. They maybe will have an alert on their physical switch, but they don't know what happens afterwards. They don't know what are the elements, what are the entities in their system that are affected by this problem in the physical switch? And if this happens multiple times, then this grows into a big, big, big problem. So that really is what Vitrage is all about. It's here to solve this problem. And one of the things that are really important here is to remember that with this visualization and with Vitrage, we can see both the physical and the virtual infrastructure and connect them together so we know which server is actually connected to which virtual machine. And that allows us to gain much more insights than we could otherwise. And um, with that, I think I'm going to hand it over to Gerald. Okay, so thank you. So I want to complete this picture a little bit and I want to introduce the OpenEV Doctor project. Um, I'm working for NTT Tokomo, uh, telco operator, and you will also see why Tokomo is interested in such a solution. Okay, so um, maybe you have seen this press release. So NTT Tokomo was the first operator worldwide that deployed a virtual EPC in, in a commercial environment in March this year. So this is very um, new information. And this actually is powered by OpenStack, and this is also why we come here to this meeting, to this conference. Um, looking a bit more into detail, what are the requirements that Telco has, specific Telco requirements? So, um, you can imagine that we need extremely high service availability. So, um, 
in our um, virtual EPC, we have the different entities. And each of these nodes that hosts a few thousands of subscriber sessions. And if one of these hosts or nodes goes down, then that would mean all the users that are connected to this node, they will be disconnected from the network. So that, of course, would be a negative impact to our customers we want to avoid. But then also what comes at after that. So all these nodes, they try to reconnect to the network. And they will do all at the same time because basically they all have the same timeouts um, internally. And this then will consequently um, result in an attach storm. So all the devices try to attach to the network basically at the same time. And this again, I mean, we have experienced this also, um, is leading to further congestion in the network, to, to further failures in the network. So then the service is down for even longer time. So most important for us is that we, if there is a failure, Failure in recovery must be as fast, as quick as possible. And here we are talking about sub-second order. Um, let's go a little bit more how um, the architecture looks like and how the failure notification um, comes into play here. So basically, in order to have really good service availability in a telco environment, usually you have this active standby configuration, hot standbys. So you always have like the virtual network function in active. You can see here in the dark green and you have the same hot standby machine, the, the more lighter green BNF um, running there so that it can take over in the failure case. So imagine there, there is a failure in hardware. Um, we need to find an efficient way, a fast way to send out um, this notification or this to detect the hardware failure. Um, in the OpenStack environment, for example, then OpenStack will need to find out, okay, there's a failure in the hardware, but who is actually running on top of that hardware? Which uh, virtual network functions are running of this, on this specific hardware? So whom should I inform about this failure? And then this information is reported to the VNFN manager who can do the switch over. So it will... Um, do some network configuration and activate the standby instance so that this becomes active and the, serv the service is running again. So um, before um, the OpenFV Doctor project was initiated, we did some initial testing and that took like in the order of minutes to get the whole process from detection, finding out the, the appropriate user and then sending the notification up there, so that was not acceptable for us. Um, so this is why we, among other um, companies, initiated the OpenFV Doctor project, and we tried to find a solution um, to overcome this problem. And here you can see the high-level architecture for NFV, a little bit different um, figure. So here on the left-hand side, you can see the virtualized infrastructure with the hardware resources in the bottom, the virtualization layer, the virtual compute storage and network entities, the applications, the VNFs that are running on top of it. You have the virtual infrastructure manager, the WIM, which is OpenStack on the right-hand side, and you have the user for WIM and the WIM administrator on the right top side. So basically, um, there are two ways how you can notify um, about the failure. So the virtual entities or the application can also detect failures and can report this to the administrator. And then you could do some reaction on the application level. There's a second way, because the virtualization layer, that is hiding kind of to the application all the failures in the hardware. So also we want to be informed about failures in the hardware uh, very quickly. So our initial uh, focus of the doctor project is um, the other way. So we go from the hardware resources through the VIM up to the user and administrator to do the um, reaction. In the doctor project, we identified we need four different building blocks to um, achieve this problem uh, or to solve this problem. So we have a monitor entity. This is basically doing the, the failure detection. Then we have the inspector entity, which is doing failure aggregation, um, root cause analysis, and so on. We have a controller entity, and then finally we have the notifier, which is then informing the uh, user side. 
As part of the doctor project, we have already um, made several um, upstream contributions to Nova, Neutron, and Cinder. For example, one of them is the state correction. Um, here you can see like a screenshot of that blueprint we made. Um, for the notifier, we were extending AGH with an event alarm. And currently, our focus is a bit more on the inspector side. So here, Vitrage and Congress are two um, very good candidates for the project, uh, for the inspector. Um, and Vitrage here, and Ohad will explain this in a bit more detail soon, um, is about the root cause analysis and the failure correlation. Um, so I was showing here two blueprints that we submitted to upstream, but there are more. So we have a um, whole list of blueprints already um, accepted and completed for Nova, for Salometer. Uh, we're also working, as I said, on, on Nova, uh, Neutron and Cinder. Uh, I, if you're interested, just go to the wiki page of OpenFV. Um, here you can find the OpenStack um, community page where you can find all the um, blueprints that OpenFV contributed to upstream. And yeah, that was my last slide. And uh, I'll hand over to Ohad to show a bit more detail. Thank you. So my name is Ohad. I'm product manager in Cloud and Nokia. And I will go deep dive into the vitrage. Before that, I will keep the talking a bit about the motivation. So I think we, we, we show a, a bit uh, in, in Iris part. And so requirement, the system today are getting more and more complex. There is a barrier between the, the physical and the virtual uh, layers. And it's, it's hard to, to know what are the relationship between those layers. Uh, there are a lot of many, many monitoring gaps. There is no one monitoring tool, either it in OpenStack or external monitoring tool that can give you the the whole picture. You 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 need to to get the information from several monitoring tools gathering together in in order to build a complete uh, view of, of your system. So it, it's really difficult to understand what is going on in your system. And and of course, as Gerald uh, uh, said, we have a lot of telco requirements, sub-second uh, alerting, and action to, to recovery. And this all together comes to, to what Vitrise is trying to, to solve and, and to provide to, to the community. So what, what is Vitrage? So the, the main three functions of Vitrage, uh, first is deduce alarm and states. Deduce alarm and states uh, deduce alarms are alarms that are not directly observed, meaning raising alarms and modify states based on the system insight, and I will show an example in a minute. The second function that Vitrage provides is root cause analysis to, to understand what was the, the root cause of a specific failure. So Vitrage can provide this insight so you will know that alarm A causes alarm B causes alarm C. And the last main function of, of Vitrage is holistic and complete view. So we, we're gathering the information from all the data sources. We're building all the entities in the cloud, whether it's across all the layers, from the physical to the virtual to the application layer, so we know all the relationship between the entities and the relationship between those alarms in order to, to give the, the user or the customer a complete and holistic view of, of the system. Vitrage is based on resource topology engine that reflect all those relationships between entities and, and, and alarms. We, we support multiple data sources, and I will touch it in a, in a minute. We have configurable business logic because different customers, different users, as different systems, and each system needs to be configured differently. And we have clear visualization of all the vitrage insights. So let's see the, the vitrage architecture and put it all together. 
So on the left side, we can see the, the data sources. So currently in Mitaka, we support Nova, Nagios, configuration, uh, static configuration file, AODH, Cindio and Neutron data sources, but it's actually very easy to add more. It takes about two or three weeks per one developer to, to add new data sources. It, it's quite easy. We are planning to add more data sources in the future, uh, like it, Zabbix, and Monaska. The, the information from the data sources is injected into, into the graph and reflected in the vitrage entity graph. So we took the information from the data, data sources and we represent it as a graph. In vitrage graph, the entities are the, the resources and the alarms. And actually, each, each entities are reflected by the vertex and the relationship between the entities are the edges. So it's very intuitive modeling that can, can bring the, the, the old picture of, of your cloud and it's very easy to us then to, to do the, the vitrage action, like to, to raise the deduce alarms and to find the, the root cause analysis because we are having this, this modeling of, of, of the cloud. We have the evaluator and the templates. So the evaluator is actually the, the logic of a vitrage. The, evaluate, the, evaluate, the vitrage evaluator is listening to the changes in, in vitrage graph. So every time there is a new entity, a new vertex in the graph, it could be a new alert, it could be a new instance, then it's raised an event the evaluator listened to that event and upon each event, it retrieved the, the relevant scenario, evaluate it and execute the necessary actions. The templates are a very human readable YAML files, uh, templates that, that, uh, that are actually the, the scenarios. So each scenario is combined. There is another section of definition. I'm not getting into this, but it's, it's a scenario as a conditions. In this example, the condition is alarm on the host and the host contains instance. And the action is to set the state of the instance to be suboptimal. So this is an example for, for, for a template. And we try as a out of the box templates for the human for, for all the common use cases. And it's also provide the ability to, to edit those templates or to add more template. So it's really configurable. Vitraz has also a notifier component to notify Azure project on, on, on Vitraz Insight. For example, if, if we know that there is a failure that affect an host or affect an instance and, and we we want to, to raise deduced states to change the state of, of that affected instance, we may want that other project can take this information and, and, and do the action. For example, that we have notifier for Nova, notifier for Cinder, notifier for AODH. And last, we have UI API. And I will quick, uh, show you what we have in the UI. So in, the, in our UI screen, we have actually three main screen, one for topology, the second one is for the alarm list, and the third one is the entity graph. The, the first one is this uh, page, is the uh, topology representation. Here in this example, it's topology of, of the compute. And it, it's a bit out to maybe to understand, but the, the inner ring is the, the Nova zone. The, the middle ring is the host. Currently, it's a dev stack, so we have just one, one host. But imagine that this ring is divided into few segments, one segment per host. And the outer ring is the VMs that belongs to, to that host. So we have the, the status of, of each resources. We have the relationship. You can drill zoom in and zoom out on, on this 
a sunburst visualization. Uh, and in the left side, you can see the information on, on the selected uh, entity. So you can see the, the ID, the name, the states, and also all the alarms that related to the selected entity. The second uh, screen is the alarm list. So we have in Vitrage uh, alarms coming from all the different uh, data sources. And you have all the, the information about each alarm. Uh, you can see on the, on the right column the, the type of the alarm. So alarm can come from Nagios, can come from Vitrage. For example, the deduce alarms are coming from Vitrage. It could be from AODH, etc. And there is a link to, to the root cause analysis. It can, this, this table can be filtered, uh, etc. And this is uh, the window of, of the root cause. And I will demonstrate, uh, I will go step by step on, on a use case in a minute. But this is uh, how it looks, the, the, the root cause. So we have like you know, the uptime error on a switch causes the host connectivity and then causes the failure on each one of, of the instances belongs to that uh, host. And last screen is the entity graph. It's to see the, the, the graph itself, all the vertexes, all the edges, uh, all the relationship between the graph. So so this is the, the vitrage high-level architecture. And now I want to, to jump into a, a, a quick one NFV use cases, switch failure. I don't have time to, to do a live demo, but I, I invite you to, to come to our booth. There is a similar, quite similar uh, demo there. So let's, let's say we have a storage uh, switch uh, failure. We don't have redundancy. This is the, the only switch uh, connected to, to the host. So first we, we monitor the, the switch by Nagios. We raise an alarm. Uh, when it failed, and Vitraj received the, the alarm for Nagios and add a vertex to, to the graph, uh, connected a vertex for the alarms, and this vertex is, is connected to the, to the switch entity. The Vitraj uh, evaluator going and find the matching scenario for, for this uh, failure, and then he find the, the template that says that if you have a failure on a storage switch that connected to a, to a host, then you have to, to perform several actions. So the first action is to, to raise the deuce alarm on the host and to add it, of course, to the graph. Then to change the host sta state in vitrage, so the host state now would, would be changed to error. And then to add Casual, causal uh, link between those alarms. So, alarm number one, the alarm on the switch, causes alarm number two, the alarm on the host. Once the deduced alarms on the on the host is added, we will do a similar process for the instances. So now we will raise alarm number three on on the instances because we we found that there is a matching with another scenario, with another condition, saying that if you have a failure on the host, you want to, to raise alarms on the affected instances that related to that host. So we raise alarm uh, number three on instance number one, and we modify the, the state of, of this instance, and we add a link between alarm number two and alarm number three. And finally, we will do the same for the VNF. So in this example, I, we change the, we modify the, the status of the VNF to be suboptimal. I, I'm not sure that it will be completely in error, but it depends on the configuration. It depends on the VNF. So in this example, the VNF will be in suboptimal. So this is one use case that demonstrate what you can get from vitrage. Uh, all the deduce alarms and, and all the connection between those uh, those uh, alarms and the, and, the, and the status, the correct status of all the instances. 
So this was very short introduction of, of vitrage, what we have today in Mitaka, and I want to, to spend another two minutes about a bit about the, the roadmap, what we are planning for the Newton release. So we plan, as I said, to, to add more data sources. Uh, we plan to do the integration with other OpenStack uh, uh, services, for example, AODH, for example, uh, Nova, to, that they will get the, the inputs from Vitrage and actually modify the, the status of, of their entities. We want to, to do alarm aggregation. In many cases, you can see in, in, in the previous example that one failure causes a lot of, of alarms and you may want to, to aggregate them into, in, in one group and we want to, to, to add this alarm aggregation uh, filtered by several categories. We want to, to add advanced templates and, and use cases. So the, the vitrage templates, vitrage will come with out of the box templates for the common use cases. The user can add more templates, so, but we want to, to enrich those out of the box uh, use cases in, in the next uh, release. And last, currently vitrage is using uh, in memory graph database. We are using network X, network X. It's uh, great for dev stack, but going to NV deployment, you need also persistent uh, graph database supports and, and we want to, to add it in, in the next uh, release. Uh, if I'm talking about connected to, to the doctor requirements, so you can see that there is a, a very good alignment between vitrage and, and the doctor requirement especially the, the inspector requirement. So Vitrage support both pull and push notification. It's crucial for, for the doctor requirement for sub-second uh, uh, response. So we support it. Although I must say that there are some issues with, with the, the monitor tool it itself. It could be delayed in, in those tools also and, and we have to, to solve it. But Vitrage itself support a pull and push notification. Uh, and we saw that Vitrage entity graph and the template support the, the mapping between the physical error and the virtual. We know what will, for each failure, we know what will be the affected uh, resources and to how to notify them and to raise the alarms uh, related to those uh, entities. And last, we have the configurable uh, business logic uh, by Vitrage, so it's, it's really configurable. So if, if I, I, I want to, to, to sum it up, Vitrage brings three main functions. One is the holistic view. The second one is enrich the alarms and the states of, of your cloud, of your system. And the last one is the root cause uh, of each failure. Thank you very much. Maybe if there are questions, we can take a few. Um, in Vitrace, how do you, you have the topology of the cloud? Um, and how do you create this topology information and how do you maintain it to align with the OpenStack um, API calls and like when you migrate the VM, can you, can your topology information can be updated? Yes, yeah, so every, every action is, is, should be represented in the graph. So if you add an instance, it immediately create addition, additional vertex in the, in the graph. We, we add this, this resource to the graph. If you remove or migrate the resource, we, we change it accordingly in, in, in the graph. So we keep the graph all the time updated. Uh, and we are listening to, to the Oslo bus messages and, and also for notification for other sources. So we, we keep Vitrage all the time updated. More questions? I have a question to Dr. Project. Yeah. 
uh, can I think that uh, Dr. Projector is going to use VFM to uh, trigger the failover? Uh, can I think that Dr. Projector is going to use VFM to trigger yep. the failover? Right, right. Uh, did you ever consider uh, other OS as uh, tools? Or just uh, provide a uh, Vim uh, not bound interface? I mean, for, for us it's very important that the Vim doesn't do any action on its own. Yeah. Uh, because we want to keep the control on, on the user side. Um, we do the hand or over, we switch to the standby instance. But then, of course, it will trigger also other um, recovery mechanisms. So you want to repair that failed. You maybe you want to create a new um, instance, a new standby. So it will also trigger other um, reactions that you will then re um, request back to the, to the Vimeo. OK, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. You can get the vitrage shirts uh, outside. Thank you.